You are not looking at a medieval tavern. You are not looking at a movie set. You are looking at my GM screen. Not just any GM screen, the ultimate GM screen. And it's portable, durable, and doubles as terrain. And best of all, it is cheap. And I show you how to make your very own today on Dungeon Craft. Death Bringer here. Subscribe to the channel and sign up for the Death Bringer RPG newsletter at the link below. Welcome to Dungeon Craft. I'm Professor Dungeon Master, and this channel is about homebrew role playing games. And the most homebrew thing I think I've ever done is create ultimate dungeon terrain. It is zone terrain that you could put in the middle of your table on a lazy Susan and spin it so all your players have access with their miniatures. This lazy Susan was created by Ray, who's a buddy at John over at Tabletop Witchcraft. And Ray, thank you so much for creating this great Deathbringer Lazy Susan. And Ray also sent some Deathbringer coasters, which are equally awesome. So thanks a lot, buddy. And it's super flattering for me to go around the country and see people I've never met before using Ultimate Dungeon Terrain with their games. Not to mention a whole Etsy community that's popped up selling Ultimate Dungeon Terrain. I kind of wish I had a little piece of that pie, but that's okay. Ultimate Dungeon Terrain is my gift to the world, but it's not done yet. There's a sequel, and that is my Ultimate DM screen. Now, you might wonder why this one looks like a city as opposed to a dungeon. Well, that's because my own campaign is urban-based, so I wanted a way I could convey to my players you're in the city as opposed to the sewers below it, like, instantaneously. Here's more about how UDT works. The concept of UDT is simple. You don't need to lay out an entire dungeon on your dining room table. The center zone represents the character's torchlight. It's like a spotlight for the group. Then you build a dungeon around them. You say, you descend the stairs into the torture chamber and place the stairs, doors, and other features. UDT allows you to play with miniatures and terrain without cluttering up your table. It's easy to set up, easy to clean up, and easy to store. And UDT is versatile. It could be a dungeon, a cave, or a city street. It's like a Broadway show set, like Hamilton or Hades Town. See this set? In Hades Town, it's a nightclub, and it's also hell. Which circle of hell? all of hell. The set designer and lighting artists build a stage, the actors act in the middle of the stage, and the audience imagines the rest. If UDT is the stage, the ultimate GM screen is like the set. When I want to convey to my players they're in the city, I simply drop down the screen and I have a city. Credit goes to the DMG Info for this brilliant concept and his best dungeon tile ever series, which is designed for playing via video. You'll find a link to his videos below. The tiles function like a stage background, but instead of a top-down view, you get a side view like Darkest Dungeon. You'll notice there are no rooftops. That's because I want the screen high enough so my players can't see my dice, but low enough that I can pass them handouts and grab some chips. It's not meant to literally depict buildings, just like the set of guys and dolls doesn't literally depict New York. The action goes on in the center of the stage. Here's the thing about buildings and taverns. While they look cool, they're completely impractical. Your players' hands get in the way. They can't see what's going on over the walls. You're better off putting them in the center of my ultimate tavern terrain. And it's the same for city streets and alleys. If the players get ambushed in an alley, I don't literally depict the whole alley. I just say, put your characters in the circle, and I drop the screen in the back, allowing us to play more world in less space. On the back, you can put whatever charts you like, and you can hide little figures that you don't want the players to see. Next, I'll show you how to make it, right after a word from our sponsor. One location I'm always struggling to come up with as a game master is a new interesting tavern. Until now. The Wandering Tavern is 15 layers of corruption, gambling, exotic restaurants, hotels, expansive workstations, and buzzing accommodations. Amongst these are 23 unique locations that range from lavish establishments down to the city's seedy underbelly. But don't worry, I've got detailed battle maps of the entire floating metropolis so all you players and GMs can find your way around. Within the bustle of this colossal airship, deadly secrets plague the air. Luckily, I was able to collect scathing testimonies from over 30 NPC patrons and staff while evading the grasp of the ruthless Claw Militia. These testimonies were laced with 30 interconnected plot hooks. Climb aboard, if you dare. Back the Wandering Tavern Kickstarter, out now. And the best thing about Wandering Tavern is your players don't need to go there. The tavern will come to them. And there's a link below. 
Now, on with the show. The screen is composed of seven panels, each two inches wide. The base is made from a 99 cent laminate floor tile. It's three inches by 12 inches wide, the entire width of the tile. The screen is four by 14 inches. I use Elmer's foam board sheets. It's a lot sturdier than the stuff you get from the dollar store and will withstand heavy wear and tear. I score the lines with an X-Acto knife, careful not to go all the way through. I just want to be able to bend them. Then I hot glue them to the base. For the pavement, I use a roll of Christmas Village bricks that I got on sale, but you can use green stuff rollers or just a stamp. The timbering and stone I carved out of XPS insulation foam, available at any hardware store. And I carve it with a small utility knife. The windows are made from plastic granny grating. Each panel is carved separately so I can achieve great detail and make sure each panel is flush, no seams or gaps. The next level starts at the 2.5 mark, a little over 6 centimeters if you're located anywhere else in the world. It's a snow day, the perfect time to sit back and do some crafting. I keep a miniature on hand to make sure the scale is right. I grab a chunk of XPS and just start whittling. I draw out my lines with a gel roller pen and carve the windows out with an X-Acto knife. Sometimes stuff breaks and I'll just work around it. I fiddle with the bits until they fit. I draw details like the bricks with my gel roller and remove the mortar lines with a pen knife. And I do it freehand. Don't ask for templates. That bump out was completely ad lib. I just carved the block of foam until it looked right. I learned the best way to do timbering is to just draw what you want and remove what you don't with a utility knife. And move slowly. You can always take away another layer. The greater the detail, the smaller the knife. You can create wood grain by scoring the foam with a pen knife or using a wire brush. And don't worry about making mistakes, it's part of the learning process. This was the first time I did any of this. I don't even have a proxon cutter. I just take half inch XPS, cut it in half, shave it down so it's quarter inch XPS, draw out the pattern, cut out the window, carve out where the timbers would be, and attach it to the backing, either foam board or cardboard. Stamp your stone with a ball of tin foil to give it texture. Then coat the entire thing with Mod Podge mixed with black paint. Let it dry overnight, it'll form a good protective coating. And the black allows you to see if you missed any spots. I paint the timbers with burnt umber craft paint and dry brush it with a lighter brown to bring out the grain. I paint the plaster golden brown and a very watered down linen white which will bring out the texture and give it a patchy whitewashed look. The stones are based in tan and then I paint individual blocks gray and golden brown for variety. I dry brush them tan to dull the paint and give it a unified look. When it's dry I wash the stones with my homemade black wash and the timbers with GW Agrax Earthshade to really bring out the grain. All right, let's talk doors. I used a couple of spare doors I had laying around. This one's from WizKids. They're like $5 each. I have a video that shows you how to make a door, but by the time you buy all the parts, it's just easier and faster to use a prefab door. Then I hot glue each panel onto the screen, adjusting them so they're flush. That's the great thing about hot glue. It dries quickly, but you have a few seconds to manipulate it into place. If there are any seams, I'll cover them with wood putty and repaint them so you can't tell. I wanted to create a wood frame to protect the edges. It's so simple, just get some big popsicle sticks and cut them with craft scissors. No rulers, because the angles are never quite straight. I just eyeball it. Then I paint it all brown. Black works too. I dry brush the stone gray and the entire facade tan to draw the colors together and age them in a unified tone. The windows are also super simple. They're made out of black plastic mesh sheets, AKA granny grating. You can get it on Amazon. I just cut a rectangle with scissors and trimmed it with my pen knife. Then I glued it to wax paper, trimmed away the excess and popped it in. And it takes some time, but it looks great. You can also order prefab windows off of Etsy. I did that with one of the windows just for variety. The final step is to hit your screen with a satin sealer, either Verithane or Minwax to give it an extra layer of protection. And now your screen is ready for the table. You can even dim the lights and put tea lights in the windows to achieve a night look. And now your Ultimate GM screen is ready for the table. Now, would you like to see a sequel? Do you want to see dungeon walls, maybe? If so, make sure you let me know in the comments. If you have any questions, put those in the comments. I'll try to answer them as well. As always, thanks to the patrons for making this work possible. If you want to join Patreon, you get tons of extra content. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you soon. May all your rolls be 20s. All right, Deathbringer, no joking. Does my ultimate Game Master screen look better than the set of Hamilton or what? You said the magic words. What? Oh no. How does a bastard off?
Ivan, son of a whore. Oh my the God. Scotsman dropped in the middle of a fuck. He's singing Hamilton. Spot in the Caribbean by Providence, impoverished in squalor. Grow up to be a hero and a scholar. Please stop. Ten dollar founding father without a father. Got a lot of He's not stopping. Like working a lot harder. Like being a lot smarter. Like being a self starter. By 14, they had placed him in charge of a trading charter. Anyway, get the Deathbringer game at the link below and click on these videos for more dungeon craft.